All right, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to the Army Guard. Today's going to be a no hands playthrough of the game because I just didn't feel like uh, recording live the previous episode. So, yeah, I'm just gonna come in through this uh, through this episode without uh, recording that one live. So, uh, since last time, I just uh, took the time to uh, unlock one chest and get uh, a talisman that was at the bottom left corner of the screen as you are watching now. Uh, also, I uh, took care of a couple of enemies that were just uh, standing there easily enough. So, uh, since there's a save point here, uh, I figured out there would be a boss coming on and uh, yeah, apparently I was right. So, yeah, I'm not sure, what did I do? I, I wanted to get, I had I wanted to have Julian on my party, see, since this is the lowest level right now, so I want her to catch up as fast as possible. So, uh, yeah, you can pretty much see my setup uh, for the uh, upcoming battle, just so you know what I'm using. Spirit Knights and whatnot. This area has actually been uh, really fun so far. I mean, uh, every good JRPG game has to have at least one, at least one ice area. I know this whole game is, uh, well, snow themed, if you like, but uh, yeah, snow area is very important. So anyway, uh, that's the next boss, and uh, I'm gonna start using Provoke, uh, have a jump, since uh, jump hits everyone, so hopefully this is going to hit all enemies. Frankly, I don't remember what I did. It's been like a couple of days back the, uh, since I did the recording. Uh, this is a pretty easy boss fight. Uh, this hoppy thingy, penguin, king hoppy thingy has a lot of HP. Uh, nearly 4,000. So, uh, let's, uh, we're going to take care of the ads first. Did I say ads? Yeah, little guys first. And uh, easily enough, I uh, had the chance to get paralysis on the King Copy guy. Yeah, Fire Q works wonder in this fight. Well, generally, I assume, since he hits everyone. To be honest, I didn't expect. Uh, Blunt blow to work so well. I mean, uh, a boss to be able, be being able to get paralyzed on a boss. I mean, makes things very easy. Still, and uh, I also expected this antibot blast attack to be much stronger than what well, than, than, than what it is. But I did what I can get. Yeah, at this point in the game, I should be uh, expecting a lot of elemental weaknesses and uh, whatnot. So maybe that attack had something to do with elemental weaknesses or... Yeah. Maybe he's strong against that element. Anyway, uh, at this point I just uh, pretty much go all out. Yeah, paralysis nullified. I guess it's not guaranteed. Yeah, of course it's not guaranteed, but yeah. Well, that was pretty weak for an AoE attack. So yeah, pretty simple strategy. Just uh, go all out. Uh, what is it? Normal attacks, fire, since the guy is really, really slow. Um... Yeah, and like I said in a couple episodes back, I'm not sure if Fire 2 actually hits harder than Fire 1, especially in... Um, what is it? Especially when you're fighting... Uh, you're up against one uh, enemy. That is. Also, did I mention how much I like uh, Nidor Sword at this point? 
It reminds me of uh, Cloud from Final Fantasy VII. Uh, what what was the sword called before he gets to the uh, glacier? You know, at the northern crater. This uh, sword reminds me of that one pretty much. So yeah, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, about the uh, meter sword. From what I've seen, I'm not sure if uh, buying all the weapons every time that they're available is actually worth it. Because uh, as you're going to find out later in this episode, uh, I get to I get weapons out of chests, and they're even better than what the merchant has. Uh, the last time you visit him. So I should be using my gill in more Sprit Knights, Talismans maybe, or even, you know, even items. I have no idea why I use Provoke at this point. Maybe I accidentally. So yeah, that was that hit really hard. Uh, 200 hit points, not gonna bother with more skills, just go all out with physical attacks. Yep, very easy. Ton of XP, yeah, I used this uh, food buff before I went into the battle. Slightly clever of me, unlike the previous times, I just uh, completely spaced that one. Uh, yeah, what about the fluxes? Uh, leave them on. So, let's carry on. Get some reserves member, get some so time in there. Grab the Eternity Lover, whatever that means, along the way. So, where are the woods? Uh, and apparently there are more things to pick up. Um, yeah, here we get another... I don't know what these areas are, I mean... Uh, we've, we've, we've come across another one earlier in the game, and just, uh, you know, this empty space where there's one guy just standing around with some random advice or something. Well, hello. Yeah. Huh? Are you sure? Because they are, uh, they are really, really helpful with all those sprint nights. So, although I, I have to say that previous guy was really, uh, really uh, suspicious or uh, well mysterious, if you like. Yeah, because where else are you going to find a ginger, a hermit's ginger? <laughs> uh, those names. So, uh, new area. And this temple is going to be one hell of a maze. Nah, I'm just kidding. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. It might seem a little bit confusing at first, but trust me, it's very, very straightforward. Mm, nah, looks like only you can hear it, man. Or are you just being paranoid? How can the ruins consume me? This didn't even make any sense. Anyway, up the stairs, and we get new enemies. Uh, no, this is not a new enemy. I thought we uh, faced this guy 
uh, in that previous forest dungeon cave thingy where we rescued that bill. Very easy to deal with. Why is it Erna missing so much? So this guy's name is Spectre. Let's go with the Trim Satter. I like this attack. Stan and Confusion. This is pretty overpowered. So apparently Anji get uh, Stan or Paralysis. Well, <laughs> my enemies are pretty much standing around. Uh, is this the right way to go? Must be. Also, yeah, I'm gonna stick with my uh, uh, demi strategy. I mean, uh, grouping the enemies together and then just hitting them all together with one attack is the way to go for me. Well, as long as I'm using uh, Endear, that is. Because his attacks. Uh, his, his attacks, his normal attacks, are basically a cleave attack. So, yeah, really good. Uh, yeah, let's just check on the area behind us, uh, before us. Yeah, let's grab this thing, a necklace. Sorry I'm not paying too much attention, but I really want to read into the new fairy tale manga. I've been really, really looking into it. Forward to it, that is. So yeah. If you haven't been reading this manga, well, you're missing out. It's very good. Probably my favorite one uh, next to Code Gears, but well. I don't know if Code Gears counts since it's only like, uh, what is it, 28 episodes in total? Something like that. Yeah. So glad it's out. Well, I'm just gonna read it a little bit later, I just wanna focus on my recording for now. So, um... Yeah, we're gonna be facing those specters a lot. And there's nothing I can do about it. So basically, the strategy for this dungeon, uh, as you have, as you might have seen so far, uh, you gotta activate all those um, panels, uh, whatever you want to call them, to uh, make your way forward. There's gonna be uh, many of them, and you we have to activate them all. You can't leave any behind. So, I thought that those um, flying enemies always uh, flee, but apparently it's not the case right now. That was really easy. I also realized that uh, when you get a debuff on a party member, it takes about... I don't know if it's measured by steps or... It's measured by uh, how many battles you've been through, but it will eventually go out. Now, like I was saying before, uh, we just got a new weapon for Endir. It is insanely better than the last one. Uh, yeah, well, you might say that I've got through the glacier with the last one, but still, I don't think I don't think it's really that much. Uh, I, I don't think it's really worth it, to be honest. But well, you can know every time, so yeah. Pay no attention to what I'm saying, though, because I'm gonna be buying them every time. As long as I have the guild to do so. Yeah, see see how Demi worked now? Yeah, that's what I'm aiming for. 
worked fine. Uh, it, 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 it has worked fine for me up until this point. So why uh, why not use this strategy? And we get a new uh, talisman. Uh, it's called Counter Strike. Has nothing to do with the game, and uh, it only has one support slot. So <laughs> I don't I don't really see the point in using that one right now. And to be honest, I should be uh, reading through the bonuses and um, everything a talisman has to offer. Like, this one has the uh, undying... Uh, yeah, I didn't get the time to read all through all of it, but... Yeah, it could be really useful, but I'm only looking for the slots right now. I found them to be really... Uh, what is it? Really worth it having... Many elemental attacks, many debuffs, many buffs or whatnot. Rather than just uh, going for uh, the perfect bonuses from talismans every time. You get the point, I'm pretty sure you do. So, um, yeah. Go through this giant floating circle. And uh, yeah, this area had a lot of forks. So I might be going back and forth quite a lot, but there's nothing I can do about it. Gotta apologize in advance. But this is a blind... Ah, uh, let's play. What can you do about it? Yeah, come on, Andy. Hit all of them, please. Perfect. Yeah, all those bonuses... Uh, kill bonus is gonna be worth it. When I go sell all those items, excess items that is, get a lot of kill out of it. And yeah, I should be starting using uh, my items. Oh, uh, by the way, you can use a tent outside of a safe point. Yeah. Too bad. Yeah, if only Demi could bring them just a little bit closer to that. That would be nice. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, I completely forgot about that. Spectres can actually eat another Spectre. And apparently these uh, these moves boost their attributes, their evasion, and pretty much everything. So, well, that's make that makes things a little bit trickier. But nothing to worry about. So, activate this panel and backtrack all the way. Not all the way, just backtrack and go across a bridge. So, alright, easy enough, let's carry on. Oh, and we've reached that point. Alright, if, if you're watching this, you go and grab yourself some popcorns, because this is going to take a while. Because it is flashback time. There is nothing we can do about it. Alright, so right now we're going to find out a little bit about Nidor's past, and uh, yeah, this is actually pretty interesting. Uh, it's not gonna take that much. Well, it definitely looks like you, man. 
really does. Oops, sorry about that. So, yeah, I was really hoping uh, that we would get a, some sort of a boss fight with only just the two of us, but this is a flashback. You don't get fights in flashbacks. Unless the whole battle is scripted or something. So, Nidu was actually... Uh, a complete badass. Back in his previous pilgrimage, that is. So yeah, if you haven't uh, figured it out already, this is a flashback about Nidor's past and his previous pilgrimage. And uh, uh, this little girl looks like looks like someone you've already met. And. Uh, Mana, that uh, lady standing right in, uh, right in front of him, is supposed to be his wife or his girlfriend or something like that. And her daughter, uh, her daughter, is that her daughter? Uh, no, no, wait. That girl is supposedly is supposed to be the sacrifice. I mean, well, the previous sacrifice before Setsuna, if that makes any sense. And... Uh, He's escorting her now. Now I thought he was supposed to have a team, but apparently he's a one-man army, so he is the team. Yeah. Yeah, just a couple of uh, uh, what is it? Flashback orbs, and you'll know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's the end. I wonder if uh, getting the sacrifice dead in the last lands is actually going to work. What is the sacrifice supposed to do there anyways? Like, commit suicide? Perform a ritual? Nah. How far are we from the from the last lens anyway? A friend of mine told me that this is a relatively small uh, sword game. But we're only level 21. Let's carry on. Where are you aiming for? You're not? Then what are we doing? Yeah, we do. We know who you are. Um, <laughs> be strong, dude. Yeah. So, neither actually feels guilt because Nana say that previous sacrifice girl uh, didn't make it to the last lands or did she just die during uh, during the journey? That I didn't completely understand. I think she just died, and. Uh, Neither just went along and tried to get all the monsters by himself, or at least kill whatever monster he could find, uh, just to get revenge on him. Get revenge, or I don't know. Yeah, he's gonna do it properly this time around. Yeah, just keep keep on fighting. You got this. Besides, the previous time you went all Rambo on them, and 
try to manage it by yourself. So this time you got like six or seven other people with you. Is it six or seven? Yeah, could be five. Unless we're getting more party members in the near future. I hope we do. Yeah, then that makes perfect sense. Why would you? Why would he pity himself anyway? I mean, uh, how is it his fault that the previous pilgrimage fa fell? Why do I call it pilgrimage? But anyway, the, his previous sacrifice journey failed. Right now you're gonna get some really uh, important information. Yeah, she's your daughter. You don't want to know her name, my friend. Yep, right there. So I don't know if this comes as a shock to you, but yeah, Setina is actually Nidor's daughter. And Endir also knows, because for some unknown reason, he's able to see through Nidor's flashback, or Nidor's dream, whatever you want to call it. Not as her father, you are her father. Yeah, now that I think about it, uh, Setsuna never mentioned anything about their, uh, about her family, her mother or her father. Yeah. We know she grew up in that village where we started, but still, that's all we know. Hmm. Yeah, because the rest of you are just super badasses and don't get affected by that shit. <laughs> Alright. Well, the group seems to be in a little bit of good mood. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Tell us that we shouldn't talk about it? Yeah, don't worry. Yeah, I get it. Well, you're doing fine up until this point. You're thinking about it too much. So, uh, for some reason, we get to choose party members once more. Um, so, I should heal up a little bit, or at least uh, use some ethers. I uh, haven't used Blowbeat in a while, have I? Haven't I? Oh. I don't have the AP? What, what happened? Why is it black? Whatever. If I had to choose 
through all my party members to create the strongest members to create the perfect team from what I've got at the moment and this would probably be um, well let's go for uh, single enemies well then that would be Eterna mm, Interna, Jeline and Ender I guess because you got all those debuffs, you got... Uh, no, you got those buffs, actually. And Andy hits like a truck. Also, Jolene's jump is really, really good. Other than that, I think uh, Kir has the most potential because of his black magic. Yeah, it's actually really good. Uh, yeah, have uh, the Flaxes added to Cleave, since I'm gonna be using this. Yeah, another item that is in the part of the too good to use. Heal up and carry on. God, that's too many snakes. Here you go. My all favorite blow bit. Yeah. And here we get a magic seal. I'm just gonna leave that for now. Probably go see what it is in the next episode or something. Activate this panel And apparently the panel on the right doesn't seem to do anything since it's red. So yeah, see you can't do anything with it So yeah, I'm just gonna go through the path that I created And uh, yeah Are we out of the woods? No More snakes for you yeah. Blow a bit, please. Alright. Yeah. This attack is an overkill on its own. Man, this has been a long episode. So, yeah. Yeah, should be ending this now. So, since we're at a safe point, guys, I'm just gonna end this episode here. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Twitch. Remember to escape reality once in a while. Ghost, Lesser Dragons, and as always, thanks for watching.